The intent of this part 4 video is to expand the B-17 bombing discussion to include a deep dive on bomb ballistics. In order to strike a target, a bombardier does not drop the bomb directly over the target. The bombardier will release the bomb with the proper Norton bombsite parameters about 2 miles prior to reaching the target. Bomb freefall parabolic ballistics are best explained by reviewing a bomb's changing horizontal speed, vertical speed, and rotational orientation. Bombs are designed to freefall with predictable, repeatable ballistics. Each bomb type will have a consistent ballistic coefficient. The bomb stabilizing fin keeps the bomb from an unpredictable tumbling. A bomb's horizontal speed will match the bomber's speed at bomb release. The aerodynamic drag slows the bomb's speed. The bomb's deceleration is not linear as air density and the bomb's projected area change during freefall. The air is thicker with decreasing altitude. This will tend to slow the bomb's horizontal speed. As the bomb freefalls, it will continually rotate to a less streamlined shape along its horizontal path. A bomb's vertical speed starts at zero the moment of bomb release. The bomb's vertical speed will increase due to gravity. When the bomb's vertical speed matches the vertical ballistic drag, it will stop accelerating. The air is getting thicker at lower altitudes and the bomb's vertical velocity decreases with altitude. The bomb's vertical velocity is also affected by the bomb's mass property ballistics since it is rotating. A terminal velocity is attained when the vector sum of the bomb's horizontal and vertical speed is relatively constant. A bomb will be released from the bomb rack shackles while in the horizontal orientation. As it free falls, the bomb will tend to rotate towards a more vertical orientation. This chart represents an AN-M64 500-pound general purpose bomb's dynamics at impacts. The x-axis represents the bomb release altitude scaled from 0 to 32,000 feet. The y-axis represents the bomber's true ground speed scaled from 50 to 450 miles per hour. The family of curves in the center of the chart are the bomb's vector strike speed and angle. The solid lines are the bomb's ground striking speed measured from 300 to 1,050 feet per second. The dashed lines are the bomb strike angle measured from vertical from 5 to 50 degrees. Let's look at an example. Suppose a B-17 releases a 500 pound general purpose bomb at a formation indicated airspeed of 150 miles an hour at an altitude of 19,000 feet. Assuming no drift or headwind, an indicated airspeed of 150 miles an hour will equate to a ground speed of 200 miles an hour. The plane's ground speed can be obtained from the navigator's B-5 drift meter. Intersecting a 19,000-foot altitude x-axis with a 200-mile-per-hour y-axis yields a point here. Interpolating between the adjacent bomb strike speed curves of 950 and 1,000 feet per second yield a bomb strike speed of 960 feet per second. 960 feet per second equates to 655 miles per hour or Mach 0.86. Interpolating between the adjacent bomb strike angle dash lines of 10 degrees and 15 degrees shows the bomb will strike at a 12.5 degree angle offset from the vertical. Assuming the bomb's horizontal and vertical speed components are coupled to the bomb strike angle, the bomb's horizontal speed at ground impact will equate to 655 miles per hour times the sine of 12.5 degrees or 142 miles per hour. To recap, an AN-M64 500-pound general purpose bomb released from a 19,000-foot altitude from a bomber traveling at 200 miles per hour true ground speed will strike the ground at a speed of 655 miles per hour at a 12.5 degree angle. The bomb's horizontal speed will have slowed from 200 miles per hour at release to 142 miles per hour at impact. The reduction in horizontal speed is due to the airstream drag during freefall. Couple observations from the chart. The maximum bomb contact speed equates to 1,050 feet per second. 1,050 feet per second equates to Mach 0.94. No release speed or altitude combination shown will a bomb strike the ground at sonic speeds. Since the 1,050 foot per second bomb strike speed line is near vertical, the bomb strike speed is independent of the plane's release speed at altitudes of 30,000 feet. 
In other words, it doesn't matter if the plane is releasing the bomb from 50 miles an hour or 450 miles an hour, the strike speed of the bomb is still 1,050 feet per second. The faster the bomber's release speed, the shallower the bomb's strike angle. We have discussed in the part one bombing video, a 500 pound delayed fuse bomb will burrow about 12 feet below the soil. The bomb's detonation will cause an earth shock crater about 35 feet wide and 15 feet deep. In order to strike a target, the bombardier will need multiple parameters to compute and feed into the Norton bomb site. The point of release can be solved as a math geometry problem. Let's assume our target is at position X and we are at a bombing altitude of 19,000 feet at a typical formation ground speed of 200 miles per hour. We need to determine position O relative to the target in three-dimensional airspace to release the bomb. We already know the bomb's vertical speed and horizontal speed at impact, but we actually won't be using those parameters. The bombardier will be looking through the Norton bombsite's crosshairs along the line of sight. The ground distance from bomb release point O and the bomb contact location X is the actual range. The angle formed between the vertical altitude line and the line of sight is the dropping angle. The dropping angle is the most important value. The Norton bomb site will be plumbed with levels and gyroscope stabilized such that the vertical line is always maintained while the plane is pitching, rolling, and yawing. When the bomb makes ground contact, the plane will be in position T. As we have shown, the bomb's horizontal speed slowed down from 200 miles per hour at bomb release to 142 miles per hour at impact. Since the bomber is still maintaining a 200 mile per hour speed, it must have flown beyond the target at bomb impact. The horizontal distance from the bomb impact location X and point T is the trail. The whole range is defined as the actual range plus the trail. We will use bombardier ballistic tables and calculations to fill in these parameters on this graphic. I have found bombing tables very difficult to find. Parameters adopted by the bombardier are also not consistent in their units. Units are mixed and given in degrees, mils, and tangents. The data in this chart is a snippet of a bombing table that bombardiers adopted to input bombing parameters needed for the Norton bomb site. The page outlines ballistics for an AN-M64 500 pound general purpose bomb and we can extract the bomb's time of flight, trail distance, Norton bomb site disk speed, and bomb dropping angle. These bomb tables are based on testing and available to the bombardier for various bombs. To determine the bomb's time of fall in seconds, intersect the 19,000 foot altitude row with the 200 mile per hour column. A 35.92 second freefall time will be expected. This measured duration is only 4.5% slower than if the bomb fell in a vacuum. The Norton bombsite will require the appropriate disk speed based on the bombing altitude and true air speed. The disk speed is extracted as 147.6. This value will be dialed into the Dor Norton's disk speed drum knob. The bombing trail equates to 48 mils. We will need to convert this value to length by 48 mils times 19,000 foot bombing altitude divided by 1,000, or 912 feet. The trail is set here in the Norton bomb site. The intersection of a bombing altitude row of 19,000 feet and the ground speed column of 200 miles per hour indicates a bomb site dropping angle of 26.9 degrees is needed. Based on the extracted bomb table values, we can now fill in the bomb's ballistic geometry chart. The whole range is defined as the ground speed of 200 miles per hour converted to feet per second times the bomb's 35.92 second time of flight or 10,536 feet. The bomb tables provided the trail as 912 feet. The actual range equates to the whole range minus the trail, or 9,624 feet. The bomb's drop angle was defined from the bombing tables as 26.9 degrees. The bomb will be released at the moment the bomb site's line of sight is angled 26.9 degrees from the vertical. It is critical the Norton bomb site's gyros are stabilized in the vertical plane so that this angle can be precisely measured. The bombing tables provide corrections, although not covered here, accounting for the target's height above sea level, 
head or tail winds, and drift angles. The corrections are applied to the trail or drop angle. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.